Proposed reading of the Permanent School Building Committee. And uh, thank everybody for coming. It's so important to keep this having a forum so we can keep the uh, money flowing. <laughs> and we'll turn it over to Joel. Okay, first order of uh, business is approval of the June 15th uh, PSPC meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor? There was a um, couple of action items uh, related to that meeting. One, um, uh, Vince and Jay were to issue the um, proposal request or sketches uh, for the dugouts for the, the, the BE items. Uh, and that's been done, and those are being priced um, um, at the moment. Uh, second, um, Matt had asked if we could bring back the uh, final approved color boards from last summer, um, and, and Vince has brought those tonight. Um, uh, we, when Matt comes, we can just spend a minute to kind of go over those. Uh, they're a little bit beat up. We've been using them for about a year now, just to make sure we're matching up the middle. So they may not look exactly as they were last year, uh, but it, they're still representative of, of what the job is. And then the last item. Um, I was to reach out to Eric Kincher's office um, uh, to have them update the cash uh, or the reimbursement um, uh, scheduling. Um, and um, Eric and Carol will be here next month at our next month's meeting for their quarterly update. So I'm suggesting that they can bring that, uh, that update of that uh, reimbursement log with them at that meeting. So that takes care of, of our meeting from last month. Um, next action item is approval of invoices and uh, commitments. Uh, we do have um, one uh, commitment uh, to go over that is uh, change order number 11. And it starts off uh, with uh, standard change order summary sheet, looking like so. Just touch base on the highlights. Um, change order 11 is in the amount of $38,151. Uh, with the inclusion of uh, change order number 11, that will leave us a balance of $5,672,000 in our construction contingency. Um, as well as um, change order number 11 included three uh, contingency transfers, that's from the GMP contingency. Um, after those three contingency transfers, it'll leave us a balance of $2,299,000 in our GMP contingency. Um, and then on the last uh, page, or the, the behind uh, the second page of the summary, is uh, the allowance transfers uh, within change order number 11. Um, those total $17,619. And so after the allowance transfers in uh, change order number 11, that will leave us a balance of $489,890 in our allowance budget. Uh, still uh, all very good shape uh, relative to our budgets. Uh, so I'll let uh, Vince and Jay walk us through change order number 11. Uh, the memo is attached right behind the summary sheet. Uh, guys, you want to walk us through? Okay. Yep, okay. Uh, so the first uh, transfer, basically, it's an allowance transfer for uh, B, uh, building C temporary roof drains. Again, talked about this once before, uh, when the weather is, the, the pipe on the roofs are uh, the drains are attached at the roof, but they're not actually connected to the underground, and so temporarily to, to avoid the water accumulating inside the building, they pipe them temporarily to outside the building. And so that's what this is for. Uh, some of that money for a total of $10,000 for that was transferred for that work. Uh, on AT033, uh, same thing. This, In this case, this is the removal of the temporary pipe that was in A building that was then transferred over to C building or B building, uh, as it were, for $3,424. Uh, 
uh, transfer number 34, uh, AVB on the north and east side of the uh, C building. This is for premium time only, so uh, this is the air vapor barrier. Uh, that work was owned, except that they couldn't do it because of the weather, so they performed that work on a Saturday, which put it on premium time, and that's what that was the cost for that, $2,820. Um, and the last uh, uh, allowance transfer is for uh, number 35, demo of the building A roof drain for use in building B. So again, it's the same reuse of that temporary pipe that's been moving around to the different parts of the building to uh, accommodate for the roof drains. Uh, change request number 36 um, is white oak finishes. Uh, our uh, specifications included a variety of different finishes. Some were red oak, some were maple, and we combined them all to be just one white oak on all the wood uh, to be a consistent finish everywhere. And that was an ad of $9,000. Oh, there was credits in the ad. Um, change request number 40, administration gates at A102 and C102. These are the administration offices. Uh, these areas, which we showed some gates, but when we detailed a little bit more, we added a quarry on top to match the counter and the uh, reception desk that was there. And so that additional cost was $1,254 uh, for a little bit more detail to match the desk. Uh, change request number 67, delete the drywall and framing at DD enclosures. Um, we showed on our plans a wall that was behind the mechanical unit. Uh, that wall didn't necessarily need to have drywall on it, but it was carried as drywall, so we took out that wall and got a credit for that uh, extra drywall that was not, in, that was not installed for $10,791. Mailboxes, put change request number 69. Uh, we had shown on the plans a couple of locations for mailboxes, but when we detailed a little bit more, uh, reviewed it with the school, we added a couple more locations and we added in 150 mailboxes. So we have 150 mailboxes total at four locations. Um, change request number 73, clarification of stage truss wall type. This was a situation where the exterior wall above the auditorium stage uh, was shown with CMU block. Uh, but the structural drawings wanted it to be, uh, or needed it to be uh, metal studs, and so there was a small credit uh, to change it from uh, masonry wall to uh, metal stud wall. Change request number 75, extra labor to accommodate the plumbing inspector. Again, this is a reoccurring uh, cost where the plumbing inspector can only come at certain hours, and it causes the plumbing uh, contractor to stay a little bit later, and, and he charges premium time to meet with the plumbing inspector. Change request number 76, uh, roof drain relocation for coordination. Again, this happens occasionally where we have uh, shown some, both systems kind of taken up the same space, and in order to accommodate one, one of them has to get relocated. In this case, it was the roof drain that got relocated, and it caused some additional piping. Uh, that was for another $2,765. Change request number 78, additional steel bollards needed for transformer. Again, we showed a certain number of transformers, a certain number of bollards around the transformer. Uh, the electric company wanted a few more, I think four more additional ones, so the cost mm -hmm. to add those uh, four steel bollards was uh, $3,710. Change request number 80, all for existing door frames. Mm -hmm. Again, in some cases we had uh, some door frames that we wanted to modify because we had dropped the ceilings and we didn't want to have the ceiling um, interrupting the, the, the head of the uh, transom window that's above the doors. So we had those doors cut down at the head for the, to, to remove the glass light above. Uh, and that was already, the frames were already in place. So that cost uh, $2,128. Change request number 82, add four inch chase walls at C212. C212 is a science classroom on the second floor. We had shown uh, some sinks along a wall that wall has a steel brace in it, which is a, a piece of metal that basically takes up the whole wall and causes it to have uh, difficulty for the plumber to get through it. So we added a wall in front of it to create a chase, and that was uh, two locations in that room for $3,448. Change request number 84 for spandrel and printed glass at the curtain walls. Again, we were reviewing the curtain walls and we uh, had to change some of the glass from uh, clear glass to a fritted or a spandrel glass, spandrel glass being an opaque glass that you can't see through in order to disguise um, either highlight the entrances or to 
this guy's uh, changes to the ceiling but behind it. Uh, change request number 88, guidance C118 sink. In this room we had shown on architectural drawings the sink that was required by the school. Uh, the plumbing drawings did not pick up that sink on their drawings so we didn't have any piping either above or below ground to that location and so this is the added cost for the plumber to add piping to that sink to make it operational. Then we have uh, contingency transfers, uh, CT26, casework layout coordination. Again, uh, architecturally we had shown some casework and the equipment drawings had shown some other casework and we had to coordinate them. some miscellaneous rooms that had some uh, rooms that weren't quite fully coordinated and this caused us to add a few pieces of casework or shift some casework around and that cost was $9,429. Uh, contingency transfer number 28, buyout of steel bollards installation. So again, we had shown bollards at the transformers in the generator, but we didn't have, it was supplied by a miscellaneous mill, so we owned the bollards, but we didn't have the, trans, uh, the installation of those bollards covered, and this cost is to install those bollards at the, at the transformer and the generator. What was that cost? Uh, that cost here was $7,332. And maybe to clarify, the, the contingency transfers are um, related to how we bought the work. Not that it wasn't shown on the drawings, but we only bought a certain part of it within the GMP. That's why it's not out of your contingency, the owner's construction contingency, it's out of the GMP contingency. It's, it's to finish buying out the job. Right. Okay. The, the installation wasn't covered. Yeah. And the last contingency transfer is number 29. Modify the existing secondary transformer sweeps. Uh, some of the early work we had was uh, done by an electrical site contractor for the early site work. Mm -hmm. And he installed most of the transfer sweeps, uh, the transformer sweeps, but uh, there was uh, one that was missing. And the new electrical contractor came on and completed that work. And he had assumed that it was all done. So that transfer was $3,481. Well, at the time that the early site package was issued, I mean, that was the first package we issued last summer, right. there was only the knowledge of the five suites. Yeah. After the 100% CDs were done, finalized all the lows, it was, uh, became evident that it's six suites were needed. And so six suites were bought in the 100% uh, contract drawings. Uh, so that's why those are zero to the changes. Any questions? <coughs> Change order. Make to make a motion to uh, accept change order number eleven as read. Second. All those in favor of that? With uh, change order number eleven, uh, we do have the, the coincident two budget revision requests. Um, through a call, the MSBA had asked us to break uh, each change order in, in budget revision request into two categories. One is for the um, owner's community costs, that's the 38000 And then the second is um, for the allowance transfers and the contingency transfers. And so within our package, um, right after the backup for the change order are the budget revision requests, uh, landscape oriented uh, budget, re revision, budget revision request uh, 15 is the first one. Hey, Joel. Just while well, people are looking for that. I'm wondering if for future meetings, whoever puts this package together, if once right before they reproduce it, just manually number it one to forty five or whatever it is. Yeah. No, I I, will. Okay. I think that's a good suggestion. because uh, it seems like I'm doing this every single meeting. Um, <laughs> it takes a long time to settle in. So budget revision request fifteen. Um for the uh, 
Three budget reallocation of $38,151 from the owners of the community to uh, the construction trade uh, change order. So moved. Second. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. <coughs> okay, so our next uh, agenda item is uh, approval of invoices and commitments. Um, as a uh, attachment to our agenda handout package, our uh, separate package, is our uh, vouchers. Uh, for our July 20th meeting. Um, cons everybody have that background? Uh, consisting of uh, invoices from uh, Eric Kinscher uh, for CPA services uh, in the amount of uh, $997.50. Uh, Blansburg Architects uh, for construction administration services for uh, $85,750. Uh, Flansburg Associates uh, uh, for uh, geotechnical uh, uh, services during construction for two hundred nine dollars. Uh, a question on that: uh, Is that the, the monitoring system that we have for the adjacent houses? No, uh, no, that's for the um, that that monitoring service is through Consigli with us. Okay. Um, this is for. Uh, uh, Flansburg's geotechnical engineer, which is a, a, a pass-through service uh, to provide construction administration uh, services during construction. And this was a site visit they had done. It's a monthly visit? No. No, it's just as needed. As needed. Yeah. We had quite a lot last summer mm -hmm. when we were doing foundations and a temporary lot. Uh, but as we're now winding down, it's the, just on a small call basis. Um, Sims made a key for ongoing OPM services for $54,080.97 and Sims made a key uh, for the owner's testing lab services for $3,212 and Consigli construction for um, the month of uh, June construction for $5,047,770. For the total voucher of five million one hundred ninety-two thousand twenty-six dollars and eighty-one cents. Any questions from anybody? We have a motion. So move. Second. Second. All in favor of that? Aye. Uh, yeah. So I will pass the uh, voucher. Next agenda item is um, the um, update from Vince and Jay on the wetland uh, flagging and topographical survey work between JFK and the new project. Vince? I don't know how, much, how, how well you can see this, but unfortunately I don't have, um, don't have it. It should be. Somewhere. The graphics aren't showing it the same way as you see it on the computer. So, <laughs> so, so what's happening is this is the area here, okay? For some in, reason, if in, you have in your package, within yes. your package, you would have a drawing have that this. looks like this. Um, it's like the seventh page in. And so what's missing from this graphic that you see on the screen is this black blob in the middle. That's where we have the proposed part. But I'll, I'll go from here, okay? 
So we did, we had um, niche engineering, our engineers go out and they had a, a, a wetland scientist go out and, and flag wetland areas and we also had niche go out there and, and determine some grading elevations within the area between the two schools to determine whether there were some uh, areas that were not <coughs> wetlands and what they would call upland areas that we could possibly put on a parking lot as the thought would be to move it closer away from the Kennedy School and closer to the, uh, the new middle high school, all, all encompassing school, K through 12 school. So the good news is that we did find some areas that were not uh, wetland areas. And those areas are basically between, this is the wetland line that, that, that bought the, uh, the Kennedy site over here. And then the other new school site is over here. And the wetland line for that is So basically between these two areas right here, is buildable sort of area that is possible for putting a, a parking lot on. Um, so that's that's the good news. There was some um, again. This is kind of not clear, but the graphic that we had had a there was an old wetland line right through here that was now determined not to be wetlands. So it also actually provides us a nice area to access from the Kennedy School from the back through here to a spot somewhere around in this area, which shows more clearly on that. And then from that parking lot, we would have that, what we had mentioned before, which was an elevated wooden walkway that would go from the parking lot to the school. So from the parking lot to the school is roughly about, well, for the school property, is roughly about 500 feet. Okay, so from that parking lot, as we would, as we would position it. Now the other thing that's not shown on here, but we could, um, get on there a little bit later is this piece of, this is the uh, flood zone. So there's a mention of a flood zone that's on that property. Okay, so that sort of shows this, but that blue line there is the extent that we know of. That basically is slightly beyond to the east of this wetlands line. So the, so the parking lot we would be proposing would be between these two, but a little bit further from this line, we can't get too close to it because we'd be in the floodplain. So we're holding it where we throw it further back, back there for that purpose, okay? So anyways, if, you, if we do build into the floodplain, it would cause us to have to replicate that. Anything that we build into the wetlands, we'd have to re replicate but at three times the amount. So it's not worth, or it's not advised to go into the wetlands or to go into the floodplain for those reasons. <coughs> but it does look like there is a potential place for at least 100 cars, possibly more. Uh, in that area, as well as access from the back of Kennedy School to get there. Any and questions? You said 500 feet to the new complex and what? 500 feet to the new? From the old? 500 feet to the new site. Yeah. But and about a thousand. Feet. A little less than that? A little bit less than that, yeah. You're almost halfway there. What was the original so, estimate on that walkway to be? I think we're over a thousand. A thousand. Like so that. basically yeah. half. Yeah. Okay. Would that would that equate dollar wise, roughly to half or? No. You're extending yeah. the road into the you're extending the road further, so I don't yeah. think it's it's less. It could but, be more. Because now you're gonna have 500 feet of pavement. Right. Right. And that's 500 500 feet of boardwalk. But, but do you need 500 feet of boardwalk? Is it wetland right all the way to the property? Again, this is wetland, yes. So, um, you know, so this is the wetland line. So that is wetland all the way back to where the defined wetland is back here. Yeah. This is the wetland line from, from the core. But wouldn't the cost of the boardwalk be more expensive per foot than pavement? Well, let's let's not figure out the cost. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, well, let's just say that I'm tonight just is curious we're, we're okay. getting information Half. relative to the request to understand what's the disposition of the property between the JFK and the new project. Now we have a sense of what that conditions are. Uh, we still have the original goal of providing a parking lot access from JFK with a. Um, a uh, elevated walkway from that parking lot to the new project. Um, what I'd like to suggest is that we now allow Lansburg and Consigli to use that updated information and update the, the rough order of magnitude. I think we have to discontinue the call of that because there's no design, 
There's no geotech, there's no anything, but it's a rough order of magnitude budget uh, for our, our next meeting. If, if you want to uh, uh, get that update, that's, that's the discussion yeah, I, point. I think, I think it's still an intriguing idea. I, I'm not really sure where we'll land on it, but. Um, Can I ask, what are we going to do with the Kennedy School? We don't know yet. We're going to do an RFQ to see what type of interest there is out there, or well, we could keep it, depending okay, so on we, that. But so where, where we yeah, yeah, that lose it? I mean, it, that's kind of not quite there. Somebody had said, I thought somebody had said early on that next to Kennedy School was, was a right of, there was a right of Yeah, but I think it's, I think wetland is the issue there, right? Yeah, it's not so much the, the property ownership. If you look on the Kennedy property here, there, this is all wetland here. So this is the wetland line of the Kennedy Okay. Line. the softball and the baseball field and I'm not sure how the plans are laid out if there's actually a walkway that's established there or is it a hard stop with the softball field is where the baseball field ends and you, we would be you know up against fencing or how, whatever you yeah, I mean it'd just be a fence around the baseball field and the softball field and if we come between them right now it's just the grass area you know, okay. yeah. area. No, with the time of the snow or the grass but maybe with the pricing exercise we can ask Vince and Jay to overlay on that the drawing that was just on the screen uh, the current design current site plan and then if there is a an added <coughs> sidewalk that needs to happen or some sort of connectivity to a hardscape yeah, yeah if you're going to go through this you're going to extend something just, hard all the way yeah, through just factor it into in the, between the baseball and the exactly. football field is yeah, what we're talking yeah. about yeah. Yeah. or wherever it lands I mean, wherever you guys have to kind of do a drawing all right yeah right. and then and then i guess you know just understanding what the scope of it would be you know having the, the pathway yes pedestrian traffic is, is a must uh, but I also think, uh, from a safety valve perspective, have Mike's team be able to use, you know, a, one of those light carts yeah. uh, to be able to, because, you know, I, we have a storage issue um, I'm concerned with, and the JFK certainly solves some of that, not for the daily supplies, but for, you know, long-term supplies, attic stock. And we might want to have, like, a, you know, a golf cart, gym cart kind of Within the, the original direction to the team, and the, that first quote the for budget number that we got two meetings, two or three meetings ago, it was wide enough yes, to accommodate the golf cart. Correct. We're making okay. it roughly six feet wide. Great. The, the, Great. the walking path. I, I so just need to go through this whole thing, and we're looking. We're, you're thinking pedestrian, and we're thinking something bigger. Right. And you know, the whole thing gets kind of blown up because we're not. It was six foot wide, right? Yeah, six foot wide. Six foot wide. Okay. I mean, worst case for stock. Right. Sorry, I don't. I don't understand. Okay. Right. I, I'm, Anything else, guys? Um, not related to that, but I could uh, bring up one thing that uh, Patty had asked the last time about the uh, PV array. I don't know if you want to just go over that a little bit. Solar panels? Uh, sure. Potential I think there was a question the last time about the solar panels up on the roof. So I just did a quick blow up of this, but again, this unfortunately doesn't show up uh, the way it was presented. But this is the uh, 
for Jim. So they kind of a TV up here, and the other spot was an auditorium roof. So if in the future there was PV, that question came up, mm -hmm. those would be the two areas to that would be located on. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, within the agenda handout uh, is the uh, report from the wetland scientist as, as well. Mm -hmm. uh, good reading. So that really that brings us to um, the discussion on the VE item status, and uh, we're currently pricing the VE items that um, you had voted on a few meetings ago. Um, um, for us to bring back to you to vote to include in the project or, or not based on the, the final pricing. Some of the pricing is, is a little bit up, some of it's a little bit down. So it's not matching up exactly, but we expected that, you know, from a budget number, from you know, Constigli's estimators to the, now the, the actual pricing from the subcontractor. So we're all kind of working our way through uh, that exercise. Um, one of the things that did come up, though, was the um, uh, maintenance shed uh, or sheds that we had um, delineated as uh, VE items um, uh, 50, you know, the VE item, not what it was, but um, on our on our VE item sheet, it was like 125,000 mm -hmm. there and for each of uh, for each of the two, one. Uh, on the north section uh, near the uh, uh, loading dock and receiving area, and then one down towards the southern end uh, towards the uh, concession stand for outdoor athletic equipment. And as we've been um, kind of talking our way through that, that pricing exercise uh, for all of the DVD items, it's become apparent that we may um, be uh, reaching a point where we might be impacting the construction progress, which which we I'm going to say we, we probably don't want to do, um, and that is uh, in order to um, um, award the metal buildings, get the metal buildings drawn up by the subcontractors and the shop drawings done, approved by uh, Kent J and their team and then get them into fabrication so we understand what the foundation systems are uh, and then be able to install the foundation systems um, before weather hits. There's a, a series of steps and durations that we should, have, as a committee, talk through a little bit. Um, and so I, I ask, um, we should probably introduce Matteo. Is Tim on the window here? Yeah, sure. Everybody, this is Matteo Batista. He's been working on the product all along. Um, you guys haven't seen him yet. Um, he's a product engineer handling mainly change orders, pricing. He's been doing some submittals on RFIs. Excellent, yeah. excellent work. Excellent work. So welcome. Um, so um, I asked uh, Tim and, and Matteo to kind of put together a, a, a rough, again, a rough sort of schedule on what's the meaning of those steps to get a metal building done appropriately and coordinated. Uh, there's, some, there's some impacts relative to schedule where we have underground utilities that are transmitting uh, the site generally in the location of where these are going. So if we're going to do the metal buildings, we probably want to relocate those before we put them in the ground. Those, those underground utilities. So there's some things that logistically we need to kind of think through um, relative to the metal storage buildings. And I know that this sort of immediately succeeds our conversation about JFK and storage and the possible long-term intention of using JFK for our storage, um, for the, the new school's needs. But there might be a deeper conversation about um, you know, should we uh, um, consider doing some of these sheds? Um, are they of, of urgent need? 
uh, or relevant need um, and with potential long term duration of getting that walk walk the walkway golf cart walkway across the wetlands permitted built uh, you know etc because that's a seven figure number roughly um, so that's that's that that'll take some time to kind of work our way through that um, so this schedule uh, rough order magnitude says we should try and make a decision at our next month's meeting uh, we do have a little float in there you know might be able to move a little bit here or there um, but that's the sort of time frame that we'd be looking at for the metal buildings is that for both or is that just for the north building we, we have more time on the so no. No, both of them. Okay. Both of them. Because we're going to do it during this. What, what's the concern? What is the main concern? Utilities? Um, several. One is uh, installing utilities now that have to be relocated mm -hmm. if we were to um, build the storage sheds. Okay. It really, it's on, the one on the south is the utility issue. Um, getting utilities to the storage sheds from the new building because there's power needs that we need to feed. And so we'd be crossing roadways, we'd be crossing you know, various things that we should put in the ground to not have to tear up. Right. Uh, getting the sheds installed, the foundations before we get into winter because it just becomes much more costly. We were very, very lucky last winter about doing foundations in the middle of the winter. Uh, and you know that type of factoring in cost wise um, and this the long lead time of getting the vendors on board getting the shop drawings developed and getting into fabrication if that's just a period of time so if we want to do it after the fact if you had the utilities in place in case we wanted to do it then this could be done after them. the fact yeah you, you dig them up and relocate them these Excuse are me? we the utilities that we're talking about, not the, there's two different sets of utilities. I, I know one you're saying the, the, feed one, the building. To feed the building, and then you the want to put something to the shot. just regular shut. storm and sanitary that's out mm -hmm. on the site that would have to be relo dug up and relocated if we were to place the building where it potentially wants to be placed. Next but you couldn't do it, just put it there in case we wanted it. Why would you have to relocate it if you already because had it? Because they're in there. the same area as the footprint of the foundation proposed yeah but why couldn't we have it there with the assuming we're going to have it done but we can make up our mind later after utilities are in place if we want it there or not because you don't want to build on top of the storm lines you, you lost me I think we'll Sorry. Just, yeah we run the utilities for the storm for the storage just sheds. put the pipe in the ground yeah put everything yeah, put in there everything no, in. well there's two different two different aspects one is the utilities that go from the new building to the storage sheds to provide mm -hmm. power. Right. Got that. That's the easy one. The second one is nothing to do with the storage sheds, but everything to do with our site drainage and our roadway drainage okay. and all of the under, underground okay. large pipes that are being placed. Gotcha. Where those are designed to be placed is in the same vicinity as the proposed storage sheds. So if we were to add the storage sheds in the future, you wouldn't put them in the proposed location next to the concession stand. You'd have to put them somewhere else. Okay. Be, I, somewhere I, else. I, I'm missing the problem with that, though, if we had to put them somewhere else if we had to get them. Because it's a very restrictive site. There's fencing. Mm -hmm. There's a very narrow okay. narrow area to put it. So you're not inside the baseball field or outside the track area. But my, my, I'm only thinking ahead that if we don't even need them because we're using the Kennedy School, then we spent a lot of money to buy a storage shed that we didn't need. The, the Kennedy I School think we left it that way. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's why I'm saying. What, what, what's that one conversation? So it's not like we have to put it there, per se. I mean, that's, I guess someone decided they wanted it there. But does it have to be there? About, you know. It's the best location. But unless we're, unless we're using the Kennedy School, then it's not needed there at all. But we don't even need it. Well, I think the idea of that was to be used for um, the you know the sporting field, which would be the one over by the football field. 
Right, so that one I mm -hmm. think was, that that was different. part of it. I understand, yeah. that's different. That's, that's the one we're talking about. That's the one that's the friend. Friend. I thought you were talking about both of them at the same time. We are talking about both of them. The one next to the football field. Okay, that, that one I understand why we would are. want that, because we'd want all the sporting. That we wouldn't want to be going from the Kennedy over there. And that's the one that I get that. the utility issue. That one I have no problem with. I, you know, can understand us doing that for that reason, yeah. Oh, okay. I was wondering about the, the second one, if we're using the Kennedy School. Okay, the what are they? I just want to re right. ask one question, recapping where we were before. I know I had asked the question about one storage building. We basically went back to two for the reason being that we didn't want either all the sporting equipment over by the loading dock, or we didn't want all the maintenance supplies over by the sporting field, mm -hmm. correct? That's why we finally went back to two for that reason, right? Okay. Make sure of that. Because we were talking about a cost savings at one point if we did one storage building. We didn't put a number on it, but we said there's a probability of a cost savings if we built one well, we had 20 by 70 or something instead of two. Oh, oh, oh. You know, you've got less walls, you know, less materials used. So, but okay, I'm fine with that. I just wanted to clarify you know, that we are back to two. Yes. Okay. I think one of the, one of the, points were that the material that we have to save when the school was done, some of it's temperature sensitive, so that would mean that storage building would have to be heated versus if you have the Kennedy School, that's not an issue. Because even if it's not used, it's still going to be some sort of a heat to, to preserve all of that material that's going to be left. So if we do it without heat, with the contingency, we could always add heat? Well, you well, you'd build it into it. You'd build the, yeah, I mean, the utilities yeah, into it right. to it's put. It's not the attic stock that is my concern. It's no. It's equipment yeah. and maintenance. Right, but I guess if we sell, if we decided to sell the Kennedy, then we'd have to put heat in the storage building. So we should at least but, I mean, it'll, have it it'll prepped for it. It'll be power for enough. Yeah, you know, right, uh, right. Electric uh, heater or whatever. Heat. Yeah. Yeah. You, you don't have to keep it in. When we're talking, we certainly don't need to run a gas line up there, I guess, as well. When we're talking equipment maintenance, what, what are we talking just the basic stuff, like what? that's all. Uh, don't fill me in. What are you talking you about know, equipment maintenance? Just sweepers. And, yeah. yeah. No, no, I think more outdoor stuff, you know, just the cleaning up the yard. We own, we own, that, we own, all, that, we own all that equipment now? Yes. So we, can, we, so we know how, how much space it takes up? Yeah, you, it's, we have a storage area at the high school attached. We did, we keep our, so. And we're going to be needing any new equipment because of the new fields? Yes, and that's why we're going to need equipment for, for the... And is uh, that part of the... Is that, that, would is be, that built into this? That would not, be kept. Oh, we have to pay for that outside of this whole... Square footage has been figured out for... All no, no, the equipment? That no. would come from FFE. Right. It, it, but it, it depends sorry. on what the... Yeah, what what's FFE? Yeah. Someone it's tell budget. me. Yeah. You have a budget speak English. in the project. We have a budget in the project yep. that is not construction cost related. Yep. It's, it's furnishings, fittings, and equipment. Okay. Stephanie? And within that budget, furnishings, fittings, and equipment would be purchased um, separately. And that's that's a whole process. Well, actually, we have a tonight to okay. talk it through a little bit. Okay. I just want to make sure that we're going to be able to get the equipment to this project, not having to go to the town side. Because there could be issues. Depends on the cost. Yeah. Right. Well, because, I mean, again, if we uh, have to go outside the project, it's something that would have to be brought, I would say, now to the capital improvement committee for their long plan so we really really have to think about that make sure that it, if it, it's in the project because if it's a, we have to purchase something outside this project it's going to be a big ticket item and it should be in front of the capital improvement committee like ASAP I think we're I think it's in the budget it, it's in the but budget it unless what it is. You, you yeah. decide to buy a truck or a large vehicle Buying something the out of the budget. norm of the right. basic right. equipment. Right. No, it's, it's the it, basic it equipment they've possible. already. Well, there's the equipment in front of the with now. turf fields. Yes. Yes. You know. That's why we need the storage area there, too, yeah. at the field. Because you're going to store your, okay. store your sweepers. If you're going to buy this just super, make sure super we deluxe model, it all is probably but, not but money. But for so. this discussion now, yeah. we're talking about two storage, storage sheds, or one storage shed, and a schedule for decision making. That, that's sort of the big picture of this, this discussion now. And um, is it 
the will of the committee to move on <coughs> getting the pricing in so you can debate the final yes. pricing for those at our next meeting to then vote do you want to not do those and do the JFK or or do them. We, we just need to make sure our construction right. um, sequencing Definitely. is appropriate so you, we don't put anything in the ground that you're going to have to rip up later. Yes. That, that's, that's the key. That was my reason for being anxious about the number for the bridge. Um, you know, having, having to make a decision on two sheds versus one shed would be nice to know a little bit further about you what probably that won't change dramatically from okay. a million plus. I can't remember what the exact number. Million millions of dollars. It's, it was, it's a large right. number. Right, but I, you know, if we were, if we were really feeling very strongly that that might happen in the shorter term, then, you know, one shed would make more sense. But um, that's why I was anxious yep. on that part. So, I know but, going to West Bridgewater a couple times, the one thing they said in that school was storage. Yeah. Their biggest problem was storage. Yeah. Is there a new yeah. Maybe yeah, they don't get just, into it. The buildings are not built to take the stuff that we're right. going to need. Yeah, so, but they, but they also had a lot of space that they misused it at that building too. A lot. They, don't, but they, going, they don't give you enough storage. They don't. They don't compensate you for storage. Yeah. Right. There was so the one thing that they said it. time and time again: for was storage. For maintenance and equipment. I will say that going to that school a couple times. They had that big, uh, whatever it was, in the middle of their area, so they had to keep wa working around it because that was planted right in the middle mm -hmm. of their um, they had like a tractor. maintenance area. They had a tractor, tractor, that's what it was, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. So they, they had to they keep had to bring climbing over. So you can't do it. Mm -hmm. Right. You, you're gonna, I don't know how they get away with it. Someone getting hurt. So tonight it's more about just getting the approval awareness. to get the yeah. numbers for next meeting yeah. as to yeah. what this will cost. And awareness that there is potentially some mm -hmm. sense of urgency. Yes. Because we deferred. You know, I was we worried did. about right. it, then we deferred it, and it kind of goes out, mm -hmm. sort of out of your mind for a while. Yeah. You know, I, I'm trying to bring it back into our consciousness that it's it's going to have an impact. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think if, if you want, I mean, the bottom line having to do with the schedule is, is <clears throat> Next month, you guys should vote if you want the buildings by the middle of June. So if you want to store attic stock there in the middle of June or you want a place for your athletic equipment in the middle of June, you kind of really need to know next month. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's, that, that's the overall point. Yeah. Quick question. Is it possible to, uh, let's go outside the buy the loading dock area, could yeah. we run the utilities, put a slab, and have it for future if, if we're not going to, yeah, I, I can give pricing. I can try to, so in our change request, I can break out the price <coughs> so so that would we accommodate that so you guys vote and you can say, hey, no building but slab, utilities, etc. So I'll try to break out the price in that way. My concern is if the JFK is a storage area for three years down the road and sell it, mm -hmm. I don't want to have to spend yeah. way more to dig up utilities. I'd rather sit with the slab that we you know, play tennis on. So crossing the roadway is going right. to take up a road a lot of electricity. Yeah, I mean, what I want is to store it. Yeah, 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 I agree. Yeah. Uh, if we put that, I think, it's absolutely ne necessary. But, to right, but you don't want to cut the parking lot yeah, back on the pavement back up. And, you know, you know, the yeah. The other thing, I mean, while we're talking about it, that I'd like to know for the pricing, because uh, I mentioned he, you know, he, I'd love to know what building, so the building by the fields, you want heat or not? So right, right now, I was assuming you wanted heat in that one. Maybe maybe not air conditioning, but you. No, definitely you know. air conditioning. I mean, my thought there is going to be athletic equipment, which ne doesn't necessarily need to be heated, but some of the some of the field equipment. I you mean, may have. Yeah, the only thing is, is the synthetic turf and stuff. You may have adhesives and stuff like that that are. That are temperature sensitive, you're just going to need to put them somewhere else, right? I mean, the equipment, obviously not, but right, just pull the batteries off. And yeah. Let them sit for winter or whatever. Either or, either or, I just, I just want to make sure I'm pricing out the right thing. Well, I would say price. I mean, could we price it, it for? Price it with heat. And yeah. We say, geez, that's we're going to break the bank. We can pull that out. All right, but no cooling. No cooling. No. Now, for the for the other one, we were talking 
with Flensburg about having for the attic stock having cooling because those are going to be temperature sensitive. So, so maybe a we, split system. So when you price that one, could you price it for heating and cool? Yeah, yeah, that, that's what we're planning. I mean, I at least if we have the utilities there, yeah, and we have the power. At yeah. least it's built so I'll try in. to get in a, a separate. Um, yeah. Price for the actual. Less worried about adding stock storage than I am worried about stuff that we need to maintain. Okay. Yeah. The building on a day All right. Basis. So overhead door, manway door, lights. Yes. Heating, and then the other one, cooling yeah. and heating. Right. And all day. Okay. Okay. All right. Excellent. Great. Great. Right. This is um, this is good. I'm glad we're talking. Yep. This is good. Okay. Okay. So I'm good. All right. I know you. Um, any, any other questions? I do actually. Sure. Bringing up one thing there. What if it was a second storage building that was equipment only and didn't need to uh, store all of this equipment? It is a little small. We, we down yeah, we downsized because this. Because of the site and, and because of that, I, I spoke with the architects on that. So if you see the one. But you could fit everything if you've got to put all the, all the materials for the school in these two? Or are we kind of already assuming we're doing something at the JFK here? Um, no, I, I believe this would, would give us enough for sure. attic stock and our plan. So could we make it smaller than if we don't, no. you know, <laughs> <laughs> if we don't need all that stock? Well, as you use the stock, it'll diminish. Yeah. Diminish and you'll have more space for other things, but oh, crap. Yeah. <laughs> room to grow. Yeah. Okay. You're gonna need book rooms. All right. <laughs> yeah. You guys have a clear direction? Yes. Okay. Use the classroom. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. So next agenda item in our package, which is right after the schedule, um, is the FF and E schedule looks vertically like this. And so there's, there's actually two budgets that we have. Um, I've seen some of those with it. Um, with those. <coughs> oh, I took the so time. Right to now, I know it was appropriate to do so, um, we have two budgets. One is for FF and or furnishings, fittings, and equipment, which would be our, our outside the Sigley contract that we would be securing <coughs> and procuring um, all of that work um, through either state vendors list or, or direct bid. And that's the same process that we went through really with the building design. There's a design phase, there's a documents phase, a bidding phase, and an installation phase. There's a separate budget in addition to the ff &E budget for educational technology. And that's the same process in which there's a design phase, a documents phase, a procurement phase, and an installation phase. And uh, Vince and Jay put together this outline of our a schedule for both of those two processes. One page is for your FF&E, and on the flip side is your, is your technology. The technology, um, each of the two budgets, FF&E and technology, the budget is $1,971,000. So you have roughly 3.8, 3 3.94 uh, in um, technology and FF budget that we will be awarding um, uh, in the early uh, first quarter there and about 2017, maybe early second quarter. So I'm going to turn it over to Vince and Jay. If you guys want to walk us through the overall schedule so we can get a sense of how that's going to play out. Okay. Um, FF&E, uh, we have our consultant is Tavares Design Associates. And so Tavares has done this on many of our jobs in the past. So they're very familiar with the process. Um, what they would do is they have listed here a July 8th kickoff meeting with the leadership teams. 
I don't know, Patty, if, that, if they've met with them, yeah. they, they've met with them already. So, so the next one would be August 5th, a showroom visit. So you would basically, they have a, a showroom in Manchester, Connecticut. Uh, you go down and they have a, a layout of all the different furnitures and then you could take it, you know, touch it and feel it and see what it looks like and sit in it and see if it's comfortable or not. You really get a good sense of what the furniture's like. So that would be the first uh, visit in, in August. Uh, then there's a second one on the 15th to a, a separate showroom in Boston, K KI. Um, again, same thing, just looking at other different furniture, different manufacturers, and getting a, a sense for what they feel like and look like and so forth, so actual physical samples. And then in late August, um, it says provide room lists. So what they'll do is they will go through each every room and create a list of all the different pieces of furniture. How many seats, how many desks, how many chairs, all the way down to waste baskets and, and so forth. Uh, in late September, they will review and revise these lists with the school. So if the school comes in and you say, hey, look, I need a few more of these or a few less of those, you know, make a revision and, and work towards getting a complete list. Uh, in mid-September, it says hand out equipment, fill in a blank form. So basically what they'll do is they'll give out a form to the school and say, what equipment do you need? What can you salvage if there's some new equipment that you've got already that you don't want to lose and you want to say, look, I could take that. I don't need this one, but I need a new one of these, a new one of these, and you, they'll create a list of all the different equipment that you're going to need. So Mike's going to need a few pieces of equipment for that field, so he'll list that down as equipment that he needs. And that's when we're going to find out that. Uh, receive all equipments list by the end of September. Additional meetings and if and when required. Again, you know, this this schedule is, is kind of a best guess right now. You, you get a little disclaimer here at the bottom. It's, you know, likely to change depending on people's schedules, but this is his best guess at this time. First week in November, the owner will approve the furniture and equipment package. So everybody's has a chance to review it. You've got all the lists. He's, he's compiled them. You know how many chairs, how many desks you have. You're going to agree to that. That's what you're, you're going to do. Then they're going to prepare their drawings. Uh, they're going to make a list of all of the different furniture. They're going to package that together and then submit those out to um, uh, different groups for bidding. Release furniture group one and equipment group one bid packages. So in early December, they have a list of contractors that they've worked for, like, like uh, Joel said, some of them on state bid lists and others that they've worked with. They'll put it out there and get prices. Uh, mid early December, review the furniture samples again, evaluation of the bids and execute purchase in order. So once we've determined who's the low bidder and, and which furniture we're going to have, they can then form those agreements. Uh, in mid January, you pick your final color selections uh, with, the, with the furniture. And then in June to July, uh, they have, you know, furniture delivery. So it's important to know that, you know, the, the dates that the building is going to be complete and when it's going to be ready so that when this furniture comes, there's a lot of it, and it's going to take some time to actually move it all into the building and make sure that it gets set in place correctly. So Tavares has done it before. Like I said, they've got, they're very good about arranging all of these things. There's really not a lot that, that other than making selections. Uh, once that those selections are made, everything starts coming to the site and gets put in place by the, the, the contractors. Any yeah, I just want to ask, we're in the process, um, will we see, have samples in the building so that, you know, teachers can sit in the chairs, kids can try out desks and that type of thing? Where do you think that will fit? I, I think, like I said, once you've been into the showrooms mm -hmm. in August and you wanted mm -hmm. to go something, say, in September or October, and you've had a chance to look at them. it, you could ask him, and I'm sure uh, they're likely to give you a couple of samples that you can put in the, in the school. Thank you. Else on we don't have to uh, pre-qualify any of these like we did construction, right? No. Okay. That's all done through them. Yeah. Okay. And there is no yeah. pre-qualification. Okay. Yeah. They're, they're already on the state side. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Um, now, much like we had our um, various working groups during the design of the building, um, does anyone on the committee want to participate with the school administration in the designing of the furniture? It's just probably a handful of meetings that needs to, needs to happen. Sure. Probably during the day. Hey, I never picked yeah. 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 up. Are there colors involved? <laughs> oh, please. I'm there. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, that's, at one point, there will be colors involved. <laughs> I'm there. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you can all lie to him, but he'll never know. I know. <laughs> 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 he thinks the school's all blue. 
Well, that's definitely what we get. Those two panels are separate items. So, the technology and the okay. Okay, so, anybody else? I'll do. Scott, Fred. You have to take a trip with us. I know. And if anybody else, you know, it, you know, comes to them after tonight's mm -hmm. meeting, then hey, I'd like to participate. Uh, just let me know, and I'll make sure Vince and, and Jay get that information, mm -hmm. so you can just be inclusive sure. in the scheduling of these meetings. Okay. But uh, excellent, Scott, Fred, excellent. Um, do you want to talk about technology schedule? Okay. Technology. We have uh, advanced design technology. Uh, as our consultant, and again, they've done all the basic design again for the base building, so they're very familiar. They've done this uh, uh, many times for schools, so they're well, uh, well equipped to do this. In August, to meet with the IT director, so there's a new IT director, so they're familiar with him, and uh, I don't know if they met just yet, but I know they've communicated yes. back and forth. Uh, Review the procurement process and preliminary decisions. Again, this is you're talking now whether they're going to go with iPads or one-on-one -on -one or whatever kind of technology that, that's like this. Not the phones. The phones technology is already in, built into the building, but we're talking now computer stations and what type of computer stations and, and notebooks and so forth. So. Servers, right? So. Uh, in October to December, develop a technology equipment spreadsheet, so similar to what we did with the furniture tech. Uh, spreadsheets, you get a, get a list of all the different number of computers and locations of computers, printers, anything like that, projectors, uh, smart boards, anything that, that, that's on the list of things that, that wants to be bought, purchased through technology that gets developed from October to December. Uh, again, January to February, develop and distribute requests for proposals. So again, uh, in the same process that the furniture is, that there's a state bid list for our technology. And so Advance would put their packages together and submit it to certain technology companies that would then bid on it and put proposals in. From March to April, they would then review those and, and pick the uh, vendor selection and, and then provide purchase orders for these equipment, for the, for the technology. In May, the vendor equipment is ordered and staging, and then in early June and August, installation of the equipment. So again, you know, when, as soon as the building is ready to receive all this equipment, a lot of that will get installed. Uh, into the building prior to uh, people moving in. So it's all going to get set up that way. Um, again, just review procurement. I mean, he has it set a little bit differently, but the technology equipment <coughs> spreadsheet, tools for programming, budgeting, employment, he'll review all of that with the school. Uh, preliminary equipment decisions. Again, these are the things that you're looking at, servers and storage, wireless versus, you know, wired. Uh, teachers' tech spec, students' tech spec, what they want for their computers, tablets or Chromebooks or, or however those uh, are decisions are made. Classroom projectors, uh, document uh, cameras, and other printers. So that's pretty much a sort of a, a quick list of the, some of the things that they'll be looking at trying to get uh, information from and, and guidance from you. Is, is software included in that? Or I, think, no. I don't think it is. No. We, we already do that through the curriculum budget. So and we have a um, actually a technology committee which is um, a teacher from each level plus the principals and central office people that have been going out to new schools and only new schools around unfortunately they all seem to be places like Wellesley West and Lexington so it gives you a different perspective on you know what um, what they have added to their budget and so they so these people have been looking at what would be appropriate at the different levels that they represent and so we're going to have a meeting when we go back to school um, so that they can discuss because they really ended up the year just going to all these schools and now we're going to discuss what would work best at what level because we're going to um, online testing and you know preparing kids in the third grade um, for online testing is different from preparing the, the kids who are in the upper grade. So um, there's a lot of discussion about that and what would be the best um, device to use at the different levels. So. Um, I think they have some very strong opinions because they're, you know, they're ready to come back and discuss. But, um, you know, I think that's going to be um, really helpful in determining what, you know, what different platforms to go with. Joe, all these groups um, that we're developing, are there some teachers involved as well? As that well? is mostly teachers, yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and for the furniture, they're going to be... Um, 
administrators just for the, because it's during the summer, going down to Connecticut and that type of thing. They're not available. But um, that's why I want the samples to be brought out and, um, you know, kids can try them out, teachers can try them out, so anybody can um, see what the different materials are. And I know that there are some teachers uh, who, when we were doing the technology visits, they were saying we want, you know, the half moon tables, they want, you know, so different right. levels had different needs. And so they want, they're going to be looking specifically at those yeah. and, and to see some examples of those. It, it, may, be, it may be helpful mm -hmm. if you know some teachers that would be on the FFA mm -hmm. yeah. if they can take the day and go down and go down Yeah, we have people going. Huh? We have people going. There's a, a group of people, you know, specialized representative and, and okay, uh, you know, different. Good. So they're they're going to be going on those days. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? <coughs> Much like um, the FF and E, um, are there any members of the staff? Right? <laughs> I'll only finish with this. I just already. I'm in. President. I'm committed. Okay, oh, yeah. Peter. Yeah. And uh, Fred. Technology on the. Okay, so yeah. Peter and Fred. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, excellent. So again, um, make sure Stephanie, Fred, and Peter are invited to any of the meetings that you have. Um, may possibly be during the day. That's so fine. We have to just kind of work I'm cool with it. Through all that. I'll bring my contention for me. Okay, all right. Any other questions relative to technology? I'll bring my kids with me. Um, so, uh, immediately on the next page um, is a letter from MSB Oh my goodness. Uh, Patty had asked uh, uh, me to contact him. <coughs> Patty had asked me to contact MSBA um, um, a little a bit ago relative to um, the purchase of uh, the wireless hubs uh, uh, for our project. Um, uh, the wireless hubs in the existing junior senior high school uh, were failing. And in order for you to maintain your wireless throughout the building, you needed to replace them. Uh, so the question to MSBA was, if we purchased uh, wireless hubs for the current junior senior high school um, of the same model and category and capacity that we would be putting in the new school, could we relocate those from the junior senior high school and put them into the new school at the, at the moment that we need to uh, next, uh, uh, next summer? Uh, the MSBA said, let us consider that. Um, um, and, and they did. They wrote us a letter saying that, yes, they would consider it. And the consideration is that the capital expense that you just had to do through your operating account uh, for your current schools, fifteen to $15,000 or thereabouts, um, um, might be able to be partially reimbursed if we run it through the project. Um, so uh, this letter says, uh, yes. They, they would agree to that. I think it was an excellent suggestion, uh, Patty, um, to get some reimbursement on this. They're calling it pre-purchase. Um, and so this is kind of information for us tonight. I'd like to be able to get your agreement that that's something that we should pursue. And then Mike and I can figure out how to, and, and um, uh, the district, I think we need to kind of figure out, because you guys have already paid it. We've already paid it. How is there a money move from the district to the project? I'm not quite sure the mm -hmm. mechanics of it, but we should spend some time on that. Because ultimately, we'll need to submit an invoice to the MSBA uh, that you guys will have to approve uh, for reimbursement. So there's some mechanics. I just don't know what the process is yet. But I'd like you to you know, say if that's something that's desirable uh, to do. Good. Okay. All right, so I will uh, make that happen, um, and then maybe we should spend some time with the brainstorming on how to where the bills are. And okay. Um, and so that's the advanced purchase of educational technology uh, agenda item number seven. So we are on to procurement update. Yes. 
So I have an owner approval log handout. Um, we're 98 percent procured. So we're almost there. We have two trades left. We have demo and signage. Um, demo I'm very close on, so um, we're actually meeting with a subcontractor this week to de-scope them. Um, so I've been saying uh, procured by September 1. We're on track for that. Right now we have a buy savings of $160,000, um, which is good. Um, and that's it. Things, things have gone really well. So, Any questions? There will be, um, at, at one point in time, we will um, reconcile the budget of finally awarded contracts against our overall GMP budget. And that reconciliation will be in the form of an allowance transfer or a contingency transfer um, to, to the positive side of the ledger. Um, we'll work all that out once we finish all the buys yeah. and let all the dust settle, and then we'll figure out the right strategy to do that. But as Tim said, everything is going very, very well. Um, you've got some good savings. Construction update? Sure. So the handout, level by 17, um, of the building. Again, construction's going really well. Um, A building, A2, we've actually um, started to get inspections on our in wall. So we're, we've actually um, started to, to uh, put up the drywall. That should be complete in August. Um, on A1, we're actually starting our interior frame. Our interior framing has started already. B building, um, we're actually, that's the last portion of the roof that we're working on. So that, that should be done in August as well. Um, B2, we're working on our in interior MEP rough, our in wall there. Um, on um, B1, we're, we're doing our interior framing as well. On C building, C2, um, we're doing interior rough, and C1, we're doing our interior framing. So looking forward to August. As I stated, building B roof should be complete. A second floor, so A2. Um, wall board, all the drywall should be hung. Building C first floor should be completely framed. All right, and then um, building C second floor, all of our MEP roughing should be complete in wall. The irrigation um, of the softball field should be done. As you can see, the baseball field is completely seated, so we've moved on to the, to the softball field. Um, just a note, our window testing happened this month for, for our mock-up, which was good. So that was successful. Fast. Fast, yep. So that was good. Um, again, I am going to talk to John about, you know, I don't know, we should probably have a tour at some point, if, if people are interested, get out there and, and start taking a taking a look at the building because it is coming along pretty nicely. <coughs> so I don't know if we is that something that yeah, you guys like are sure. interested yeah. in doing. Um, so we meet at seven. Um, is six too early to do a tour? Six a.m. next no. month. No. Six, uh, <laughs> six a.m. Be very very clear. Uh, <laughs> I'm cool with six. Maybe at our next building committee meeting. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, yeah. Seven, yeah. I do it yeah. once a week, so. So meet up there. 6 p.m. August 17th at the site. Yeah, sure. That sounds very reasonable. Is that good? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. The 17th? So, so yeah, we're just going to all meet there at the building? We should meet at uh, our trailer. The, um, the trailer. 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 Yeah. You can park right in front of the trailer. With the proper yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. acquired yeah. stuff. Yeah, we'll, we'll provide the hard hats. Uh, you guys need to provide the right shoes. Right. Yeah, no sandals, please. No flip flop sandals. Uh, any questions relative cons to construction update? Okay. Awesome. Uh, any questions? Mm -hmm. Any more questions? Yeah. Okay. Uh, next meeting is. Oh, sorry, John. Oh, sorry. I know that uh, months ago I brought up the um, discussion about uh, creating a new um, 
graphic logo uh, for the Bulldogs, considering it's a new building. And so I wanted to kind of, and then it was, it was approved by one at the table saying, that, yeah, but you know, I wanted to kind of push that along, knowing how things don't take as, uh, they aren't as quick as you know, we would like them to be. So, you know, knowing that we're a, a year out, it's probably a good time to engage, I don't know who would do that necessarily for us, engaging like a graphic artist to create the, uh, the logo. How about Ask Blue Hills? That's, That's a great idea. How about Ask Blue Hills? Yeah, yeah. The graphic uh, arts department. classes, maybe. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, someone knows. I was thinking, it's a $100 million building. I was mm -hmm. thinking, uh, I'm more professional. It could be refined. It could be refined later. It could be refined. Yeah. 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 I'm sure between the two companies, we should come up with a list of graphic. Done anything with that yet? Uh, but why don't why don't we take that on for the next committee meeting? Yeah, we'll just to get it. I mean, we don't need it. We don't need to sign next. No, no. We at least get a list of get, get it going, and then the we can decide on that. And yeah. the Next meeting, we okay. can engage them and get the price and you know, kind of. And it'll be December by the time we get anything, and then approve it, and then at least it's in place for when. You know, that's what courts are being done. Football field. All that stuff, yeah. Okay. Football field. Okay, excellent. Right, thank you. Any other committee questions? Yeah, I guess, uh, I was going to ask Matt, but um, what we found in dealing with classroom expansion and renovation is that we are short on power. So with students coming with their own laptops or if we have Chromebooks or whatever the case may be, and, and there's online testing, <clears throat> excuse me, in the classroom, what we find is is that you may have 28 kids that have to plug in. So I don't know if you have thought about that, because I heard the drywall going up. Um, there may be a, a necessity for yeah. 28 outlets, 28. So whether it's some rail that gets plugged in, that, that goes under the carpet, or whatever the case may be, if kids are going to be, you know, attached <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have You're some, gonna need power. We so. have some bars that have gone up, like a okay. counter that you okay. pull up stools to that are gonna have um, you know the, all the outlets across it and we just made sure that we had that USB plug there too. Um, we don't wanna put things in the floor no, only because uh, we're gonna move the furniture around. People right. that's the you know, Yeah, they'd have to try to do whatever and yeah. Gonna, yeah. But that was one of our biggest concerns too. I just know that we were affected yeah. by that's spending that's lots of money and Right. Issues with power and there's never enough power. So, yeah. <laughs> but would it be uh, something that maybe we ask uh, Jay and Vince just to bring us a sample classroom or sample? Yeah. Just, yeah. just, just so we can put it on the table and talk into yes. it. Can you guys do that for next well, we have we have a sample classroom uh, out there already, so we can we can take a look at that. Yeah, we can bring you up. We can, yeah, in the tour, we can bring, up, yeah, we bring everybody up to those. Let's let's have a plan though, because we're it's hard to visualize. Yeah, you know, studs and unpainted drywall. What's you know, going to be what? Yeah, you know, we should be looking at an empty box. Okay, so good. Uh, we'll pull all that up. We'll have a hand out for everybody. We'll get that. Okay. Uh, any other questions? How many elements? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? We did it.